Hello and welcome to Popeye's Fusion Kitchen. I'm Matt and today I'm going to show you how I make my smoked meatloaf and then at the end we're going to use it to make my ultimate smoked meatloaf melt. It's going to be really really delicious and uh, you guys will love this recipe. Um, as always the recipe will be in the description of this video but let me go ahead and show you the ingredients that we're going to be working with. All right so I have two pounds of ground bison if you um, don't want to use bison or you can't find bison, then just use 80-20 uh, beef uh, ground hamburger. You're going to need two eggs. I like to use the ratio of one egg for every pound of meat that you use. Worcestershire sauce, some breadcrumbs, a whole onion, six cloves of garlic. Yes, you're going to need this slice of bread and I'm going to show you what we're going to use it for. This is my homemade steak seasoning. I will put the um, recipe in the description of this video. And then a tablespoon of bacon grease. So let me go ahead and let's get started and I'll show you how, what we're gonna do. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop up, found chop up our onion and our garlic, and then we're gonna put it in a pan and saute it. I like to saute my vegetables because there's moisture in them and we don't need any additional moisture uh, in, our, in our meat. So let's go ahead and get started. So now what we're gonna do, I have this preheated pan. I put a tablespoon of bacon grease in, in here. Now we're gonna go ahead and saute up the garlic and the onion. We're gonna start with the garlic and then we'll add the onion in a bit. We're just gonna saute it up to it's translucent. And then, uh, and then we'll let it cool before we add it to the meatloaf mixture. I know you guys are gonna make fun of me because I like using ladles whenever I'm cooking, um, not a spatula. Or sometimes I use spatula, but I don't know. I prefer ladles. I don't know why, I just like using them. I like using what I'm not supposed to use, I guess. All right, so been cooking uh, for about a couple minutes after I added the garlic. As you can see, there is, it's not brown, it's just translucent. That's basically how you want. So now we're just gonna take it and sit out the side and let it cool down before we add it to the mixture. Okay, welcome back. Now, what we gotta do is just mix everything up. So now I got my meat in here. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of bread that we have soaking in the water and we're gonna bring all the water out of the bread to it, as much water as we can out of the bread. So we're just gonna wring it out. Make sure it get as much out as you can. And then once we get it all running out, then we're going to put it in the mixture, but we're going to tear it up. Okay, I think I pushed the water out. And then we're just going to tear it up in a little, like, pieces. thing we're going to do is just add our breadcrumbs. So I got half a half a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. Throw that in there. <clears throat> then let's go ahead and crack both of our eggs. Add those in there. Let's add our sauteed onions and garlic once it's cooled down. Don't add it while it's hot, don't put eggs. You don't want scrambled eggs in you, or maybe you do, I don't know. I don't. And then we're gonna add a couple of shakes of Worcestershire. Now I like Worcestershire sauce. I don't know if I said that right, but I like it a lot, so I add quite a bit. 
You can add as much as you want. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna add roughly about two tablespoons of my steak seasoning, which I said I will add to the des description of this video. Now, important part, you can either wear gloves or you need to wash your hands really good. We're we'll gonna mix this by hand. And you wanna make sure it's mixed really good. You don't want no like big, <coughs> any parts of the bread um, showing. You wanna make sure that it's all mixed thoroughly. And I'll show you what it looks like once I get done. All right, guys. So now we're mixed up. This is what it looks like. As you can see, everything's mixed thoroughly. There's no like pieces of bread or breadcrumbs showing or anything like that. It should be mixed like that. Now, what we wanna do is take your pan and I'm gonna use this pan that I've already, uh, I've added some bacon grease to the bottom of it. And um, you can just use nonstick spray, olive oil. Um, I like the bacon grease, it gives that uh, additional flavor. And then we're just gonna Take this out of there and form it into a loaf. The important part, this is the important part, is you want to make sure that this loaf, that this loaf is even pretty all the way around. You don't want one part bigger than the other because then it will cook uneven. So we want to form this and make sure that, you know, we're, we're making this pretty, similar all the way around. This is kind of like a, like a artwork, I guess. It's like taking clay, but you're using meat. I don't know, I don't know. All right, guys, so now we got it. Run it in there, it's pretty even. Now it's time to uh, get the uh, get the smoker ready. So I'll see you there. All right, guys, so I got my smoker ready. This is, uh, this is working with a old, oh, this is like the first smoker that I ever used. It's a trial ball. <laughs> Nothing special about it. And, uh, um, oak, some uh, cherry, and some apple wood. And, uh, I'm gonna keep it a bright bit around about uh, between 215 and 225, and uh, it's gonna take about a couple hours to cook. But um, I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. Let's go ahead and make the sauce, because this, we're gonna need to put that sauce on towards the end. Let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and make the sauce. So we're gonna need about a cup of ketchup. Now, you, you know me, I don't measure very much. I am measuring this, but it's roughly about a cup of ketchup. And probably have five left in this bottle, so that's actually good. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. So I need about a cup of that. And the reason why I'm making, I know you're probably like, why are you making so much? Well, because. I'm making a uh, uh, smoked meatloaf melts at the end, and I and I only put this sauce on the uh, to glaze it, um, glaze the meatloaf for it when it, before it ends. But I also add this on to the actual sandwiches. So now you're gonna need a little Worcestershire sauce, and we're just gonna add probably about three tablespoons. And then whatever your your favorite, whatever hot sauce you like the best. I like Texas Pete. I ran out of Texas Pete, so I'm using Frank's Red Hot. I'm gonna need a little bit of that. And then some Cajun seasoning. Now we're gonna mix it up and then we're gonna taste it. And this is how I tell which, how much 
how much more <laughs> ingredients that I need to use. Cajun hey, seasoning always makes me sneeze. And one other thing I'm gonna add, I didn't think about beforehand is, I'm actually gonna add some parsley to this. Mm. It's good. This is what it looks like, guys. See, it kind of resembles the color of a barbecue sauce. It's really good. This is really, um, like I said, you can make it as, as spicy as you like. I'm not like, I'm not trying to burn anybody up, but I love to have a little bit of spice in there. And the Worcestershire is really the ingredient um, that's gonna add that color. So you see how I turned from a red to a brown. I'm a hot, it's like a kind of mahogany color. But that's from that Worcestershire. So you can add as much as you want. This is not a uh, scientific experiment where you have to be, you know, precise. It's kind of dunce their taste. You figure out the flavor that you like. And that flavor, that flavor profile is good for you. And it's good for me. So let's go ahead and let's, uh, I'll show you exactly how we're gonna use this here once the meatloaf gets done off the smoker. So I'll see you then. All right guys, so it's been roughly an hour and this is what it looks like. Um, now we got at least another hour and uh, hit 225 and then I'll probably bump it up at the end to about 250. Um, the reason being is, is it helps with the glaze and then I, I don't like my, uh, I don't like my meatloaf like uh, rare or medium rare. So I'm gonna make sure that it's like Pretty much well done. I mean, but it's gonna it's still it's still be juicy. Um, but the sauce is gonna be melted on top, and you'll see. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys. So we're at 180 right now, and I'm gonna tell you right now, this thing is doing real good. Now we need to what we need to do is we need to put our glaze on here, and the glaze is to put on here plus put on a sandwich if you guys choose to do it the way that I like to do it. But we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna let it cook for about 10 more minutes and then we're gonna bring it off. So let's do that now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and sauce this thing up. Nice meatloaf, put our sauce on here. Let it get glazed. You know, it's probably gonna be in here for roughly 10 more minutes, roughly. But the thing is, is we want this thing to get glazed and then we're gonna use that to make our nice sandwiches. I like to put a generous amount of glaze on this thing, it's good. You guys make this, let me know. It's real good, real, real good. And then we're gonna leave this on for 10 more minutes. It gets smoky glazed, and yeah, man, it's gonna be, you're gonna, you're gonna love this. It's gonna be the best meatloaf melt or sandwich that you ever made in your life. All right, guys, so this is what we have going on here. We've already glazed this nice meatloaf. Now, we're gonna bring it off, you know, it, it's, it's, it's ready to go, and we're gonna let it cool down before we start making sandwiches. And I'll show you what exactly that looks like. All right guys, so I got my, my smoked meatloaf and I went ahead and I want, to, I want to make sure that it gets crystallized in the pan before I put it on the meat. So I'm gonna put it on the raw skillet. There's nothing else on here other than butter. Other than that, there's nothing else. And it's gonna get brown on both sides. Then I'm gonna put it on a sandwich. Then I'm gonna put it back on here and I'm gonna make it melt. All right guys, so I toasted one side of each of these breads and then I also toasted the meatloaf. Now I'm gonna put it in here and I have this really cheddar on the bottom 
and then pepper jack on the top. You can do whatever you want to. 